Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here today on PTCGO. We're taking a look at some more team up decks. Today we're going to be taking a look at Incineroar GX. So this is actually a deck that was originally supposed to be featured on our testing round series, but as you guys probably may know by some of our other recent videos, I kind of mentioned I've been really sick and I was never able to actually record commentary or anything like that, but I still really wanted to try this card out here on the channel. It's been a lot of fun out of the games I've been playing with it, so I knew I wanted to uh, at least do some sort of video still on this card. So in Terror GX, it's one of the few, I think, better non-tag team GXs that we're getting out of team up. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. This is, of course, the main attacker of the deck. So it's 250 HP, stage 2 Pokemon, dark type. A lot of standard stuff for a dark type Pokemon, fighting weakness, psychic resistance. That's fine and dandy, kind of what you'd expect. Uh, but it has this ability, very interesting. Once during your turn before you attack, they put three damage counters on this Pokemon. If you do... Search your deck for up to three Dark Energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon. So, it's pretty cool because you can, as soon as you get this Incineroar out, you can power it up out of nowhere. You know, a lot of the trouble with Stage 2 decks is just, you know, first you, you have to just find the pieces that you need just to get your Stage 2s into play. And then after that, you still need to find Energies and other things to get them up and running. But Incineroar is pretty cool because as long as you can find your Rare Candy Incineroar, the deck kind of sets itself up on its own, which is something I really do like about this and it has two different attacks both cost just three colors the first of which does 130 and you discard a special energy from your opponent's active pokemon so it's nice we can discard things like double colorless energy it's going to be very good against zor arc decks like decks that you're going to have to like trade two hit knockouts with and uh, you know just in general Incineroar is going to be a deck that is going to have to revolve around winning the two shot war so it's really nice that it has this uh, you know, extra effect of discarding energy in the process to make up for kind of the awkward amount of damage it does because even with a choice ban, we're only doing 160, and then from there you would need things like Professor Kukui in Devoured Field if you wanted to get even higher. And it's just really clunky to take one-hit knockouts with this, so I feel like the way to go with Incineroar is to kind of play it just like a two-hit knockout deck, deny energies in the process, we have max potions to heal off Incineroar, which is also pretty cool because if your opponent attacks into your Incineroar, you can go max potion and then use the ability again to get all of the energy back onto the card, so it's a pretty cool attacker. And it does have a pretty good GX attack as well. Darkest Tornado GX does 10 plus 50 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So uh, at one point you will have some sort of one-hit knockout option at your disposal at some point in the game, which is pretty cool. You, you can take one big knockout and then just two uh, two-hit knockouts from there will win you the game, which is pretty nice. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty cool card. It has a lot of good things going on for it. Uh, it will need some support, but before we get to that, I do want to just briefly point out we are playing the Litten and Torcat from Team Up. Very important to note because these guys just attack for colorless energy, which is pretty important. All of the other Littens attack for fire energy, so we want something that we have the option of attacking with at the very least here. The attacks aren't too relevant, but just want to quickly point out those are the best ones to play for this deck. And then the other key support Pokemon we have here is going to be a 2-2 Alolan Ninetales line. So of course Alolan Ninetales GX, you guys are probably plenty familiar with this. Whenever we evolve into it, we can search our deck for two item cards. Uh, we can grab a rare candy to get our Incineroar out. Or maybe in the late game, we can grab a max potion to heal off our Incineroar. Whatever it might be uh, to get our combo or to keep our combo going throughout the course of a game. And we do play some copies of Fairy Energy in this list as well. So we do have some options uh, in terms of attacking with Alola Ninetales as well. If we choose to, sometimes Snowy Wind can set up knockouts for us at some point in the game. Uh, that might help us turn some of those two-hit knockouts into one-hit knockouts once you factor in like the snipe damage. It's not going to come up too often, but it does give you the option at the very least to have a different attacker here. Let's see, from there, just one copy of Ditto to give us some flexibility in terms of what we want to evolve into, and two copies of Tapu Lele to round out the Pokemon line. Pretty streamlined stuff here, guys. Going on to the supporters, we have two copies of Elm. This is, of course, our ideal first-turn supporter. The search out all of those Vulpix and Littens in the deck. Uh, we also have four copies of Cynthia, of course, one of the best draw supporters we have right now in the current format. Two copies of Lily as well. This is going to be an alternate first turn supporter we can fall back on. You know, sometimes if we have the means of searching out a supporter with a Lele, but we don't have a follow up draw supporter, sometimes Lily is going to be superior to Elm in these situations. So it's still a solid uh, alternate first turn option. And just drawing until you have six is half decent too, even in the mid game. 
And then from there, we also have two copies of Erica's Hospitality, a brand new supporter that we've gotten out of team up. One of the best cards I think to come out of this set. So you can only play this if you have four or more cards in your hand. Or I'm sorry, you can only play this if you have four or fewer cards in your hand, excluding Erica's Hospitality here. But then you draw equal to the amount of Pokemon your opponent has in play. So it's a little less restrictive in, than Lily in terms of you know how many cards you can have in hand while getting a very powerful effect. So that's why it's in here, just another alternate solid uh, draw supporter we have. Three copies of Guzma, of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on as well. I believe that's going to be it for our supporter cards. Going to the rest of the trainers, a lot of standard stuff here. Four Ultra Ball, four Rare Candies, all pretty common inclusions. One Stretcher. Uh, we have two copies of Timer Ball as well because we really need to find those Nine Tails and Incineroars as quick as possible. So, of course, flip two coins for each head. Search your deck for an Evolution. Put it into your hand. So it's especially nice to grab off of a low nine tail. Sometimes if we have a bunch of really important resources, we don't want to ultra ball away. Sometimes we can evolve into nine tails, grab ourselves a timer ball and a rare candy and grab our incinerators out of the deck this way instead. Now, of course, it is a flip card, so you might get a little unlucky once in a while, but most of the time timer ball is a nice inclusion here. Uh, we also have three copies of Max Potion, like I said, to tank hits for this deck. And Cinnora is a very tanky Pokemon uh, in and of itself. So it's really cool that we can go Max Potion, heal off all that damage, and then use that ability to recharge our Incineroars uh, immediately and keep on attacking. Uh, so in this deck, we actually do go through a good bit of energy, though. Uh, so we have two copies of Energy Recycler as well. So Energy Recycler, uh, shuffle five basic energies from your discard pile back into your deck. This is a card I'm still going back and forth on in terms of how many are going to be run in the deck. I definitely think one at the very least is absolutely needed. I'm trying out two right now. I originally had a 10th Dark Energy, but I ended up cutting it for a second Recycler uh, just because it kind of ensures that we have, uh, you know, it doesn't take up any additional space and gives us theoretically more energy throughout the course of a game that way. So like I said, between our Incineroars getting knocked out, us abusing max potions, we are going to actually go through a decent bit of energy sometimes. Let's say we have one copy of Switch. All the Pokemon in the deck have kind of a clunky attack cost, or I'm sorry, a retreat cost outside of like Lele. So Switch is just another option, just ensure that we can attack with whatever we want ideally. Let's see, then we also have a couple of tool cards, nothing too important. We have one single copy of Choice Band. This might seem a little bit odd, but most of the time we actually don't really need any damage modifiers. Like I said, if you really are determined to take one hit knockouts with Incineroar, I think you're going to have to commit things like a couple copies of Kakui, Devour Field, multiple Choice Bands. I think it's going to be the best way to ensure that you can consistently pull that off but we're just playing the single copy we're playing this up like a more defensive build but we still want one copy of choice band and that's because we do have some tag teams in the mix now that are outside of incineroar's two hit knockout range most notably venusaur and the new uh snorlax as well so we sometimes might need choice band just to ensure that we can effectively two hit knockout those types of pokemon but other than that it's really not that useful most of the time sometimes it can be useful with nine tails but like i said we're playing kind of a thin count here just because it isn't as impactful as in most decks that normally get a lot of value out of choice band here just because it doesn't your math really isn't that great even with choice band in the mix and since we're not playing multiple copies of choice band we're also going to play one weakness policy this is another card i'm going back and forth on uh, you know, right now it remains to be seen how popular Buzzwell is going to be, or even like, or even like Zorark Lycanroc. Um, so it remains to be seen how important eliminating weakness is going to be with Incineroar. But like I said, since we're not playing Choice Bands, this seemed like a decent like defensive tool that we can include. It's going to eliminate our weakness. So of course, it's going to make sure our Incineroars can't get knocked out quite as easily by those Buzzwolves, those Lycanroc GXs. And also, sometimes it's good for Ninetales as well. You know, there are some metal Pokemon running around in the format like Sogaleo GX. So sometimes we can throw this down on Ninetales, make sure that thing can't knock us out in one hit. So like I said, this is definitely a flexible spot. This is We're going to have to kind of keep an eye on how the metagame shapes up. Uh, once team up is legal for tournament play and then from there you can probably have a better idea if you want to cut this or not but i'm kind of working under the assumption buzzwell is still going to see play but if it doesn't like i said you can easily cut this in place of something better 
And then from there, we just have a couple of stadiums, the first of which is going to seem very obvious, Black Market Prism Star. So whenever a dark Pokemon has any dark energy attached to it and gets knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, that player takes one fewer prize card. And of course, much like with the other Prism Stars, uh, this can't be Field Blower out of play or anything like that, which is really nice as well. So this is going to make sure our Incineroars, not only are they kind of tanky and are hard to knock out with all of our max potions, but once our opponent does finally knock one out, they're going to get one fewer prize card, which is pretty nice here. And then also we are playing one Wonder Labyrinth Prism Star. This might seem like kind of an, an odd inclusion. Now, of course, you can get value out of this with Nine Tails uh, because the attacks of non-fairy Pokemon cost one colorless more. And of course, can't be field blowered out of play as well. So you can attack with Nine Tails, make it harder for your opponent to take knockouts. But that's not even the, necessarily the reason why it's in the deck. You know, Incineroar can already power three energy up and then all it needs is one manual attachment for turn. And Wonder Labyrinth is not really going to affect you. Even if you're attacking with Incineroar, this card really doesn't do much to hurt you, but it hurts your opponent. So as long as they don't have a counter stadium, it's going to be kind of hard for them to attack into your Incineroar. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be definitely a pain for decks like, um, you know, like single energy attachment decks like Zor Arc decks or things like Lost March. It's really going to be annoying for those types of decks. So it's just, again, another kind of defensive option to ensure that our Incineroars and even Ninetales go, you know, a little bit further and don't get knocked out quite as easily. And then going on to the energy count, guys, we have, of course, nine dark energy, but we also have two fairy energy in the deck as well. This is going to allow us the flexibility of attacking with nine tails if we want to. And one thing that's nice about Incineroar as well is that it attacks for colorless energy. So even if we're in a situation where we've run out of dark energies, we can still manually attach a fairy for turn to Incineroar to help fulfill its attack cost. So it really doesn't even hurt us that much to split our energy count here. If anything, it just adds more flexibility to our deck and gives us more attacking options here. So yeah, guys, that is going to be our attempt at an Incineroar deck. Uh, I do think there are a couple different ways you could build around this. I think the like Gardevoir style engine with Swamp Earth and stuff like that is also valid here. I think that is definitely worth trying out. Also, I do think you can build this a little bit more aggressively with things like Kukui's and higher choice bank counts and things like that to ensure that you can knock out Lele's and Blacephalons and things like that. But right now, like I said, we're going for a little bit more of a defensive route with this list. But let's hop into a couple games and show off how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, we're just going to get ourselves into a game here. Let's see. Our opponent does have a Venusaur deck box, so we'll have to see if that gives us any hints as to what our opponent might be playing. Of course, we had the new Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX come out in Team Up, so this could be something like that. Uh, this hand's actually pretty good, just taking a look at it. We are going to start Vulpix. That's definitely the best starter in the deck. We have the Raw Elm. We don't even need to Lele for it or anything like that, so uh, we're definitely looking to be in a pretty good spot, uh, at least for our first couple turns here. We have Nine Tails ready to go as well, so uh, we should be able to get the turn two in Cinera pretty easily based on what we have here. So we'll have to see what our opponent is going to put down since they're just selecting their starting Pokemon here. Um, like I said, right now, just based on the sleeves and deck box, looks like they're going all in on the Venusaur idea. So that's what I'm assuming what we're playing against. Oh, but here we have an Absol. Let's see. If your opponent's active as a basic, treat is one more. So that actually could be slightly annoying, but luckily we actually have our switch in the deck. Uh, right in our opening hand. So here we're just taking a peek, seeing what we have. We have both Nine Tails, both Lele's. Uh, looks like we do have a Tiner Ball prize, but we do have both our stadiums in the deck. Okay, so uh, also it looks like our Choice Beyond is prized. Uh, but yeah, most of our important cards look to be there. So here I'm just trying to think what we do. Really not sure what we're playing against, so I kind of want to attach this Fairy Energy, but I think I'd rather attach the Dark. Uh, just in case if our opponent has like a Lele DCE switch or something like that and can knock us out, I really don't want to uh, lose a fairy energy so quickly. Uh, but at least this way, this will set it up to where we can attack with Nine Tails if we have or if we want to. Uh, but here, opponent is going to get down Venusaur. So this is going to be some sort of Venusaur Celebi deck. Curious to see how our opponent has built this. If I had to guess, it's going to be kind of similar to the Japanese list. We're going to see a weakness policy coming out of there. In interesting. Guess that's going to be for Blacephalon. Here we're going to see an Escape Rope. I'm actually fine with that because now we can uh, get into our Incineroar and start attacking 
uh, without having to burn our switch or any energy in the process. Okay, so they are going to find a Shaman as well. So what do we do here? Uh, we need to Ultra Ball, but at the same time, not sure what I want to get rid of. So I think a Dark Energy is probably fine. Well, actually, we should probably just go ahead and Nine Tails first. And let's see here. We're definitely going to want to get a Rare Candy. That is a given. So let's see. Um, we can get Timer Ball as well. So we can do that and... You know, ideally, I don't want to have to burn this Ultra Ball on an Incineroar. I'd rather use it for a Lele, but if we can get a heads off this Timer Ball and get Incineroar out, uh, we actually can use that Ultra Ball for Lele or even just save it because we really only need Incineroar this turn. There's really nothing else we're really going to be looking for here. So we're going to play Timer Ball. We really need one heads. Okay, and luckily we did get one heads. That was kind of sketchy there. Uh, but yeah, so we have the Rare Candy Incineroar, so now we can get this guy up and running you can use that ability to uh you know get some energy on our center and actually this is this feels pretty good because we have switch just in case if our opponent does have a uh you know dce to start attacking into us we can uh, you know to poison us and all that stuff we can just switch out of it which is really nice so we're gonna get down that fairy energy and i'm just gonna go for a crushing punch here or we could actually use, hmm, we could use the switch, actually attack with Ninetales, but I think I actually want to save it. Uh, this Venusaur is inevitably, inevitably going to put us on some sort of status condition, so I think we just go for the two-shot here. Uh, what is actually pretty unfortunate is that we did prize our choice band, so that means we actually have to three-shot this Venusaur. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but luckily we can actually take a one-hit knockout with this GX attack. So your opponent is going to get down a DCE. And really, okay, so our opponent put down another Shaman. This is actually really good for us because now uh, we can take a knockout with our GX attack. And then even if our opponent sets up another Venusaur, we can just Guzma three times to win. So I'm actually perfectly fine with this. So they're going to get all three Shamans out, or who knows, they might even play a fourth. So yeah, we are literally just going for the Guzma strategy uh, against this deck here. Uh, our opponent is going to use Pollen Hazard, which will put a bevy of status conditions on us, but like I said, it's not really too relevant since we have the uh, switch and everything. So we can do that. Uh, okay, yeah, and Absol works even if it's on the bench, which is slightly annoying, so we actually might have to... Um, actually, what we could do... Hmm try and think what we want to do here like how do we want to because uh, we could like scar charge and actually put more energy out of the deck well, in turn but here what we're going to do we're just going to hard retreat this nine tails instead so uh, we're going to leave the fairy energy on it just to give us the option of using snowy wind if we want to and we could put down the black market but i think i want to save it i really don't think we're in any danger of being knocked out because Venusaur is going to take two attachments at the least. And here we're going to grab three prizes, which is ridiculous. And here we get the victory screen. So, uh, yeah, Venusaur is definitely good when you're playing against stuff that can't knock it out in one hit. And uh, Incineroar can do just that. So, uh, I think between taking the one-hit knockout and getting four, you know, one or four easy Pokemon to knock out there, I think it was a good call from our opponent. I think as long as we didn't prize any Guzmans, we were just going to win. Uh, but here we're going to try our look at another game. And if here's are going against Malamar, that actually could be slightly annoying for us. We'll have to see what kind of variant this is. This could be Ultra Necrozma. It could be like a standard Malamar with like Marshadow, Necrozma, etc. Uh, it could be the new tag team. So I'll have to see. It could be a spread version. Um, really not sure which one this is going to be, That, but that will definitely influence, I guess, um, you know, how how much of a chance we're going to have here. So what do we do here? We don't have a draw supporter, but I think I want to go for the Elm. We have an Ultra Ball in hand, so if we really want to, we can grab a Lele for next turn. But here, we really just want to make sure we get down our basics so we can grab uh, two Littons, and I guess probably Vulpix is fine. If this is Balamar, they're really not going to threaten a knockout. Uh, the only way I think we would potentially get knocked out is if we attach this energy 
and if our opponent has like Lele DCE switch or skateboard or something like that. But um, you know, most of the Malamar variants don't play DCE outside of like the more EV Snorlax like oriented versions. So I think the odds are kind of in our favor here. It's a little risky, like I said, because there is a version of Malamar out there that can take one and knock out, but I think chances are we're gonna be safe here. So here our opponent is going to go for a Mysterious Treasure, discarding the Lele, so they must already have a draw supporter in hand. So they're gonna get down an Inkay. And just a Cynthia, okay? So maybe we'll see an attacker this turn come down on the bench and give us an idea of what we're going up against exactly here. Okay, so we're going to see an Ultra Ball here. Can they get rid of any energy? That's going to be the next thing they're going to be trying to do here. Okay, and they do get a Psychic Energy in the discard, so that's definitely good for our opponent. Not really what we like to see, but... <laughs> and here our opponent's going to hit us with a Marsh Shadow. Okay, so... Uh, I really don't mind that too much. Our hand wasn't that great, but we did have the Ultra Wall to bail us out of it at the least. Woof. Okay, that hand is pretty bad. And here they're just going to retreat into the Marsh. I'm fine with that. And that's actually a really good top deck. So here, oh man, that is actually really good. Considering we don't have a draw supporter in hand, that is perfect. So what we can do here, we can go for the Nine Tails. Uh, just taking a peek, seeing what we have in our deck really quick. It looks like we've prized both of our tool cards. Uh, I don't know how much that's going to help us unless we're playing against like the um, like the tag team oriented versions. But here we're just going to go for a Scar Charge, getting some energy down onto our Incineroar here. And just trying to think like we could evolve into the Ninetales, but really don't think we need to. There's not we really want this turn. So here... Or, well, no, we can do. We can actually evolve this Vulpix just to kind of preserve this Vulpix with an energy. I think that's okay. We can just grab some items for the next turn. We can grab an Ultra Ball to make sure we can uh, grab a Lele. And then maybe, I think maybe Switch. That could be an option. Or Ultra Ball. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's fine because if we're going to go for an Ultra Ball... Yeah, either one of these is kind of like what I'm leaning towards. But here, I'm ultimately going to decide on the switch. I was thinking maybe Ultra Ball because we could Ultra Ball it away. And it's kind of a resource we don't mind getting rid of. Uh, but here, okay, so we hit a Timer Ball. That's pretty good as well. So uh, I kind of figure between our prize and our top deck, we'll have some cards that we can afford to get rid of here. So our opponent's going to go for a Cynthia. They do find themselves a Malamar. Do they find an Attacker? That's one thing we haven't seen yet. And, you know, I'm okay with that. We can get a couple prizes ahead before they can get set up. That's good good for us. Okay, but here they are going to get energy down on this Lunala Prism Star. Very interesting. So I believe they do 20 times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon. And they do have energy in their discard pile, so they are threatening to attack with it next turn. So if they get all energy on, that's what, 80, 120, 40, 60. They're not threatening a knockout, but... Um, let's see, what are we going to do here? Guess we'll get rid of the Recycler. I think we have the other one still in deck. So I think what we're going to do here, it's a little bit risky, but I think we're actually just going to Guzma up this Lunala. We have the switch ready to go as well. Uh, I really want to take this thing out. I think actually knocking out Malamar would actually be pretty good as well. Maybe... Yeah, maybe in the long term, that actually would have been a little bit better here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think maybe maybe we should have done that. Or even just taken the knockout. Uh, we weren't in any danger of being knocked out by this thing. Because what would that have been? Like I said, I think it would have been hitting for like around 160-ish. So we actually would have been pretty much fine. So yeah, I think maybe got just a little overly aggressive there. Or at the least should have knocked out the Malamar. Uh, just because they were inevitably going to promote the Lunala to attack us the following turn, probably. Here we're going to see a treasure, so getting rid of the Dawnwings, okay. That's fine by me, I suppose. Okay, so they're just going to pass over to us. So, yeah, I think this is the turn we put down Black Market, just because our opponent has two Malamars online. They're kind of at a point where they could 
uh, you know, maybe get something set up and take a knockout on us. And here, I guess, yeah, we'll evolve into the Nine Tails. That's fine by me. Uh, we can grab ourselves a rare candy. And maybe a max potion. That seems pretty good. We really don't need too much else. So at least that will kind of set up our next turn. And, you know, we still really don't know exactly what we're playing against here. We haven't seen too much that's really unorthodox for Malamar. So, hmm. So we'll get down the dark energy and I guess we could scar charge. That's fine. Then some more cards out of the deck at least. So we have one more dark energy left in deck. We still have our recycler as well. So um, I think we'll be fine here. So here we're just going to go for a crushing punch. Take a knockout on poor little Marshadow. 260 damage. Um, okay, so we'll have to see what's going to happen. Our opponent's going to promote this NK. That's fine by me. Gonna evolve into a third Malamar. Okay. Oh man, and they do have the Altar of the Moon. Um, okay, but luckily it actually does help us too. Basically, it gives everything we have free retreat. So here we're gonna see a Giratina come down. Okay, I don't mind that too much at all. Here we're gonna see a Nest Ball. Oof, that's uh yeah, that's actually kind of scary. <laughs> um Do they have switch? Or actually, they don't even need it. All they need is energy from hand to attach to Malamar, and they'll have free retreat. So, ooh, this actually looks kind of bad because they do have Dawn Wings in the discard, and they can actually use Moons, Eclipse, GX on us. If they do, I mean, luckily we have a Guzmo, so we can still actually take a knockout the following turn and kind of set up to where all we need to do is knock out this Marsh Shadow to win. Ah, uh, yeah, they are going to go for the Moons, Eclipse, GX, so that's super annoying. But, um... I said we're still kind of in this. Uh, we can goose up probably just a Malamar. And I think we do have to Ultra Ball here. So we'll get rid of... I guess Lillian... Actually, you know what? We probably should have gotten rid of the Max Potion here. Because we still have two in deck. And this Marsha is just going to be taking one-hit knockouts on our Incineroars. So, yeah. We definitely, I think, should have done that. Yeah. Because this Incineroar is getting blown away next turn. Um, but this is still fine. We have... Uh, this other Litten. So, um, you know, it's a little bit risky, I think, attacking into the Malamar, but at the same time, it would have been really bad if our opponent had... If we didn't take a knockout and our opponent had Guzma, that would have been pretty bad for us. Because, like, we could have hung back this turn and just waited to use Scar Charge again to set up a big GX knockout on this Marshall. But like I said, if they had a Guzma, we would have been in really bad shape. Uh, and not gone down to two prizes. So right now, it's kind of bad, but as long as we can find uh, another Incineroar next turn, I feel pretty good about where we're going to be at. It's going to be a close one, don't get me wrong here. Uh, this Mars Shadow is pretty big uh, against our deck here, uh, especially since we prize the weakness policy as well. Uh, I think that's in our last two prizes. That's really terrible for us. So I guess we're going to see second recharge, probably on the Giratina, or maybe even on... Okay, it looks like the Inke, just, just to have a free retreater with that Altar of the Moon, probably. And here we're going to see Dark Flash, okay. So we, yeah, we'll promote the Ninetales for now. And yeah, we attach the Fairy Energy, and we're just going to Cynthia. We need Rare Candy and Sinora really bad here. Ugh, that's annoying. But luckily, we actually do have the Wonder Lab. That's actually pretty big here because now we can... Yeah, I think we have to Rescue Stretcher and get back another Lit in this turn. Because if our opponent Guzma's this thing, we actually don't have a way to knock out this Marsh Shadow since our Choice Band is prized as well. And here, we're just going to Snowy Wind. Basically setting up to where... Uh, basically, our opponent has to find some way to knock out this Ninetales or even a Lele... Uh, otherwise, I think we're in a good position to potentially win next turn. We only have 15 cards left in deck. And, uh, you know, oh my god, are you serious? Our opponent hits the Necrozma GX off the Acker bike. Oh my god, that's so, that's ridiculous. And of course, they have the energy as well to get around Wonder Labyrinth <laughs> and knock us out too. So, yeah, okay, that feels pretty bad. <laughs> our opponent definitely had a good string of luck there towards the end of the game, but we're going to try our hand at another game here, see what we can make happen with Incineroar. 
and so we're seeing a dark and grass deck box so not sure out of team up like what new archetypes would have that typing i'm assuming it's probably just going to be zoroark decidua i think that's a safe assumption here and okay it's actually a pretty decent hand we have the vulpix we have litten we have a draw support we don't have elm which is unfortunate but we do have uh, one of each of our main Pokemon here. Okay, so we are seeing a route. So right now, like I said, I'm assuming Zoroark to Situi, and if that's the case, that's actually fantastic for us. So they're going to get down a Rainbow Energy on route. That's fine by me. Uh, this is great because our, you know, uh, Incineroars, we can discard. Ooh, first turn Judge. That's actually pretty bad. Let's see what we're going to get here. Ouch, that is pretty bad. Luckily, we do have Wonder Labyrinth. Oh, but our opponent doesn't even get a Zerua down. Hmm. I think we still put down the Wonder Labyrinth just because if our opponent has, like... Hmm. Because if they had, like, Rare Candy, Decidueye, and a Lele DCE, they could knock us out. Or even just Rare Candy, Decidueye, DCE. So I think we have to put down the Wonder Labyrinth and try to... You know, just be as defensive as possible and make sure that we don't get knocked out here. So here we're going to go for, I guess, Lele and Cineroar, I guess? Or if we get, like, Guzmud and get this Litten knocked out, that feels bad, but... Um... But you know what? I almost feel like Incineroar is probably safe here. They did judge themselves into a four-card hand. Do they really have what they need to pull that off? I think... In any other situation, I'd probably just go for a Litten, but we're going to go for the Incineroar. Like I said, I actually think they might not have what they need to take a knockout here. So let's see what they're going to do. Uh, they did miss the first turn Elm, so maybe they can find it this turn. So we are going to see an Ultra Ball, okay? Getting rid of a Mad Cargo, very interesting, and an Acer Roll. Okay, actually, really don't mind seeing the Acer Roll hit the discard pile because we are going to be going for the two shot war as well. So I really don't mind that hitting the discard pile here. So moment of truth, where are they going to get off this lately? Okay, they are going to go for the Elms Lecture. Very interesting. So now we'll finally get a better idea of what we're going up against here. Okay, Vulpix and Tuzuru. So, yeah, this is going to be Zork Ninetales. And actually, I feel pretty good because typically this archetype doesn't play any stadiums. So, if that's the case, this Wonder Labyrinth is actually going to sit here for the entire game, which is pretty oppressive, actually, for a deck that is reliant on being able to attack for just a single attachment. So, I think we're already favored to begin with, even without the Wonder Labyrinth in play. But with it especially, I think we're in a great spot. Okay, and our opponent's going to beacon and attach an energy to the Vulpix in the process. I am fine by that. And they are grabbing a Nine Tails. Yeah, we are definitely knocking out this Vulpix. Uh, so yeah, we have the switch in hand, so we can always just uh, burn that after we use this Nine Tails. We're definitely going to go for the rare candy. And just trying to think, what do we get here? I think I'm actually going to go for the weakness policy and just discard it with this Ultra Ball. We could do that. Uh, could get down Choice Band somewhere as well. But yeah, I, I think I like this just fine here. So here we can Ultra Ball. We can get rid of... I guess we can get rid of the Recycler as well. We do have our other one in deck, if I remember correctly. Uh, let me just double check here. Or, well, is that what we want? Yeah, we'll go for the Litten. I see we could go for Ditto. It gives us the flexibility of going for either of the Pokemon. But, you know, I think this is better just doing this. So here we're going to go for the Lele. We'll just go for a Lily. This is going to be one of the few turns we can actually Lily for a clean hand of six. So i much rather play it when we can just because uh, something like Erica or Cynthia is going to be more flexible at other points in the game. So we're going to go for our Incineroar here going to go for a lily oh actually you know what we probably should have gone oh wait no this was the correct play because i, I remember this uh normally i would scar charge before going for a draw supporter but in this case we actually need the additional energy attachment because of wonder labyrinth so i needed to make sure we could draw into a dark energy before using the ability which would otherwise reduce our chances of hitting what we needed so 
Uh, that paid off pretty big. Like I said, our opponent can't use that nine tails that they got off Beacon as well, which seems really big for us. And just in general, like I said, guys, I feel pretty good about this matchup, especially since they typically don't play any counter stadiums. We discard their special energies every time we attack. We have max potions. It's This should be like one of Incineroar's freest matchups it could possibly hit. Alrighty, we see a DCE come down. Not worried about that. They need to find a counter stadium. So they are going to trade away that Nine Tail seems good and just a Cynthia here. So yeah, I feel pretty good about this. Uh, another Zor Arc online. That's fine. Draw all those cards. <laughs> it's like Zor Arc's going to be attacking us easily anytime soon. Okay, they're going to discard the other Nine Tails. Uh, can they find a Decidueye? That's one thing we have not seen come online. Or they couldn't even try to find another Vulpix. Oh, but they have Counter Game. That's actually pretty big here. So that will allow them to get around this Wonder Labyrinth. So what do we do? What do we do? I'm trying to think. We could Max Potion off this Incineroar and then just discard the DCE. But... I mean, I think that would be okay. But at the same time, well, hmm. But then they still have the counter gain. We don't have field blow or anything like that in this list. Maybe that's something we could cut the uh, weakness policy for potentially. So here I'm just going to go for Ditto. Um, so actually, I think I might GX this turn. It, you know, I think it's unlikely our opponent will have a way to knock us out. They would need a counter stadium, which again, I don't think that they play. So I'm working under that assumption. Even if they hit like double Decidueye, they can't knock us out with Feather Airs. So here, I guess we'll just go for an air cut and draw five cards. Okay. That's pretty good. We have ourselves a nine tails for next turn. We have the rare Kini in hand, so we'll definitely be able to find another Incineroar, even if this one does go down. So here. Yeah, I think we're going to go for the GX attack. I think this is good. 760 damage. <laughs> yeah, Lele is definitely dead there. Ooh, and we hit Timer Ball off of the prizes. That's actually pretty good here. So, I mean, I don't know really what our opponent's going to do at this point. I think we already have this one kind of wrapped up. But here, our opponent is going to promote the Rallet. Okay, maybe that tells me they're going to try to go for a Guzma or something like that, maybe. Or maybe go for like a hollow hunt or attempt to. I don't I don't really know exactly. Or maybe they're just trying to sacrifice something knowing that they need two attachments to take a knockout. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm thinking they're going for here. Uh, luckily for them, we don't have Guzma to like get the first hit in on this Azor arc. But that's okay. I still think we're in a good spot. Here they are gonna get their first decidui up and running. So let's see, they are going to get 20 down on Ditto. If they do have the other Decidueye, that would actually be kind of annoying here. But, um, it, you know, even if they do, I'm not too worried. We have the Timer Ball Rare Candy, so there's not too much we really, really want off of this Nine Tails, anyways. So we're going to see an Ultra Ball hit the discard pile as well. We'll have to see what exactly our opponent is trying to dig for. Maybe he's trying to set up their next turn. Okay, just to pass. So. I feel pretty great about the spot that we're in. And we do hit one head, that's good. So we can go for another Incineroar here. We can use Rare Candy, get this thing up and running. And we have Max Potion as well. So we will evolve into Nine Tails and grab ourselves Energy Recycler and I guess Choice Band? Or maybe Ultra Ball, that actually might be. Well. Hmm. I guess that's okay. Yeah, like I said, there really wasn't too much else we really, really wanted this turn. So, I guess we just... Hmm. I guess we can actually retreat to Ninetales. That's actually an option, too. And we can... Yeah, we just Max Potion the Incineroar. That's fine by me. see and we do have the energy recycler we could get that down um i guess we'll 
Not sure who we attach to. I guess we'll just start trying to power up a manual Incineroar for at some point. Or actually, maybe just attaching to Lele or Ninetales actually probably would have, would have been better here. Um, and yeah, we'll get down the choice band, I guess. The math could be relevant from that at some point. Oh, but we're just going to get the victory screen. So our opponent concedes, and I think that's probably smart on their part. This is definitely, that was definitely a really good matchup for Incineroar there, had that been able to go to completion. Uh, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at Incineroar GX. I've really been interested at trying this card out. It's a lot of fun. Really been liking this deck. But as usual, guys, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel over on patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.